Hey everybody, I hope you guys are having a great week. Well, it's Wednesday and uh, we want to come to you this evening and share a few thoughts from Scripture. And so tonight, um, I'm going to be looking at Deut- Deuteronomy chapter 8. And so, we come to week number 6 or 7, I believe it's week number 7 of this quarantine of COVID-19. And, you know, we, we ask these questions, you know, what is God having you know what 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 is God doing? What does God have in mind? What is what are, what is His purpose in this whole scheme of things that is happening all across the world and in, in in our in our culture today? And I think Deuteronomy eight might have an interesting word for us to um, to give us some insight. You know, I, I don't again, I'm not claiming to have uh, some special knowledge, uh, some some inside track uh, to what's going on, but I do believe that that the word. Uh, can clue us into times of pain and affliction and confusion, and so kind of kind of tells us um, and shows us maybe what God is up to. So Deuteronomy chapter eight, it is the last book of the book of Moses. So uh, you have Genesis to Deuteronomy; uh, those are the first five books of the Old Testament. Those are called it's called the Pentateuch. It's called the, uh, the 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 books of Moses or the book of Moses, depending on who you talk to. And so you have you have this story uh, of God of creation carrying all the way through the life of Abraham. A couple of characters like uh, like Joseph, for example, which he's you know a very well known story at the end of the book of Genesis. And then you get into Exodus, and so that's where we meet Moses. Well, Deuteronomy is the last. Uh, book of of that section, and this is really the final uh, chapter, if you will, of Moses' life as the leader of the people of Israel. And so they are coming to the end of their journey in the wilderness. They've been in the wilderness for 40 years, Uh, and, and we'll talk about why that is in a moment. But if you know anything about the end of the book of Deuteronomy, then you know that Moses eventually dies, and, and the torch, so to speak, is passed on to Joshua. Well, Moses, in trying to enlighten the people of Israel, shares a few things about maybe what God was doing in the wilderness. Uh, you know, they spent 40 years out in the wilderness, and Moses kind of tells them, hey, listen, what if this has been a test? And that's the question that I want for us to think about this evening. What if this has been a test? What if this is a test for us? So I, wanna, I have three verses I want to read. Deuteronomy chapter 8, verses 1 to 3. I want to read them. And then I'm going to go back and I'm going, to, I'm going to walk through them and explain some things I think that are really important to point out. So Deuteronomy chapter 8, verse 1. The whole commandment that I command you today, you shall be careful to do, that you may live and multiply and go in and possess the land that the Lord swore to give to your fathers. And you shall remember the whole way the Lord your God has led you these 40 years in the wilderness, that he might humble you, testing you to know what was in your heart, whether you would keep his commandments or not. And he humbled you and let you hunger and fed you with manna, which you did not know, nor did your fathers know, that he might make you uh, know that man does not live by bread alone, but man lives by every word that comes from the mouth of the Lord. So Moses is insightful here, and he's teaching them on some lessons learned in the wilderness. Again, they're in the wilderness, and, and, and we'll talk about why they're in the wilderness here in a second, but they're there. And and when we, people talk about the wilderness we often see the wilderness as a, as a form of punishment, and it was a form of punishment. You know, the people of Israel had had disobeyed. They, they didn't believe God. They didn't take God at his word. Think about this. In the Garden of, of Eden, Adam and Eve disbelieved God and didn't take God at his word. It's repeating, that, that same sin is repeating itself here. The people of Israel didn't believe that God would give them the land. Uh, when God said, hey, I've promised you this land, you can go and take it, they, 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 they trembled in fear rather than, rather than living in trust and living in faith. And then not only that, did they, not only did they disbelieve God, but they also, um, they also worshipped the idols. They turned their back on God. So they, they disbelieved God. And then usually when you don't believe God and you don't believe in God's word, what happens is you, you, you slip even further into idol worship, which is exactly what they've done. So this, this, this period of 40 years is a punishment to be sure. But it's more than just a punishment. It's a punishment, yes, but it's also a test. 
What if the, this 40 years was a 40-year test? Well, that's what we see here in verse 1. He says, that he says that this whole commandment that I've commanded you today, you shall be careful to do that you may live and multiply, and you will go in and possess the land the Lord your, your uh, the Lord swore to give to your fathers. And then so 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 again, this was supposed to be something that was a teaching moment for the people of Israel. Well, we get to verse two, and it says, "You shall remember." Wait a second, remember. What's the importance of remembering? Could remembering be important? Could some of the most important things we do in our walk with Christ? Be simply remembering some of the truths that God has spoke to us in his word. Maybe sometimes it's not always doing. Sometimes it is doing. But sometimes it's just it, it, God wants us to remember. 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 You know, here in the Old Testament and in the New Testament, remembrance is, is demonstrated in obedience. Think about, a, think about your relationship with your kids if you have children. Um, you tell them to do something. And uh, they fail to do that thing. And then they come back into the house and then they say, oh no, I remembered that you said that. Well, you obviously as a parent don't believe your child remembered. Otherwise, they wouldn't have done the, th the very opposite of what you told them to do. I remember what time that I was mowing the yard. In my, the very first time I ever mowed the yard uh, at my mom and dad's house, I was, I was like 8 or 10 years old. I was, I was young. And so... My mom and dad, or my dad said, now listen, there's a, there's a garden hose that runs from the back of the house out to the dog cages. It was like a hundred foot hose or something. And he said, now whenever you get around this area, you need to turn the blade off and don't, you know, not to run over the hose. And, uh, and I told, I, I shook my head. Yeah, dad, I got it. I, I'm, I'm not going to mess this up. And I remember saying that. And then I, I was, I got, I got caught up mowing. So, um, uh, so, so busy mowing that I ran over the hose in actually two or three places and I went to turn the water on to, to, to refill the dog's water at, at, at the end of my time in mowing. And my dad said, what happened? And I said, no, I remembered, but, 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 but I forgot. Well, it's like, well, obviously you didn't remember, right? Remembrance is demonstrated through obedience. If I had really remembered, I wouldn't have ran over the, with the water hose. If the people of Israel had really remembered, they wouldn't have fallen into idol worship. They wouldn't have disbelieved God and his word. They, they would have kept the faith. They would have kept on pushing forward, kept on following the Lord. But they didn't do that. So, so Moses is saying here, so this is a test that you would remember. You would remember the, uh, the, the way the Lord your God has led you for f these 40 years. Remembrance. And look at what's going, look at why, look at what's happening in the wilderness. He says, you would remember the way the Lord God has led you for 40 years in the wilderness that he might humble you, testing you to know what was in your heart. So it's a test. And it's not for God to find out what's in our hearts or what's in, what's in the people of Israel's heart. You know, this whole situation here, God knew what was in their heart. Because God knew what was in their heart, he tested them. The point of the testing was to reveal to themselves what was going on inside their hearts. It was to reveal their lack of faith. It was to reveal their lack of repentance. It was to reveal the fact that they had worshipped idols and that they needed, to, they needed to get their hearts in the right place and reconnect with God the way God desired them to. Through repentance, through faith, through obedience that comes from faith. So, he says it's a test. It's a test of the heart. And, that, and, and, and that's going to be interesting for us here in just a moment. But then we get to verse 3. And he says, and, and Moses says, that he, he humbled you by letting you hunger. By letting you hunger. In other words, he let you hunger. He, he let you have it your way. He let you um, try to live in your sufficiency. He let you try to live in your live out your own wisdom and your own strength. And 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 what that does is it really just produces self-inflicted struggle, self-inflicted turmoil here. And and Moses says, We don't live by bread alone. So, in other words, you are not meant to be satisfied. You will not find true life. You will not find the things that are sufficient. You will not find the things that God intends for you to find in and of your own self, in and of your own way. Life's appetites always leave us empty. Life makes big promises and they and they and it cannot uh, make good, it cannot deliver on those things, whether it's money, whether it's pleasure, whether it's it's fame or some type of uh, identity or whatever it may be, those things will not satisfy you. You will be hungry again. So sometimes God tells the people of Israel, I'm going to let you go hungry. 
I'm going to let you go hungry so you will find out that you cannot depend in and you cannot provide for you cannot you cannot guide you cannot depend in and of yourself. You are not sufficient for yourself. And so and ultimately what he says is is that that the Lord let you hunger and he fed you with manna so that you would find out that man does not live by bread alone but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. In other words, Real life comes from real satisfaction. Real sufficiency comes from trusting and walking with the Lord. So that, that, that's what he's trying to teach them. Uh, it, it, that's what Moses is saying to them. Moses is saying, listen, this, these past 40 years have been a test. And God is te- trying to teach us something here. God is trying to teach us to depend on him. God's teaching us to look to him, to worship him, to walk with him. God is the creator, the sustainer, the giver of life, true life. And the way that we remember these things is we walk by faith in him. Okay, let's apply that to you and I. Let, all that is true of the people of Israel. Deuteronomy 8, they're, they're not in the promised land. They have been punished. They are in the wilderness for 40 years. They're waiting for their second go around, so to speak, to get into the promised land. And, uh, and we understand that God is testing them. What if, what if these last seven weeks or so, what if this quarantine, what if everything that's happening in our world, what if this is a test for you and I as followers of Jesus? I believe in part that it is. I believe that th- that everything that is that was said about the people of Israel could be applied here to you and I. That this is a test. And so if this is a test, we must ask the question, what is what is God trying to do? What is God what is God up to in the, in this? It feels like a wilderness. We've been wandering day in and day out. You're not used to being home as much as you are. You know, your work, you've lost you you you, you have decreased hours. Your you know, the paychecks are different. You know, your kids are going crazy, you know, uh with with, with not being in school and and you're going, "What is God up to right now? What is God wanting to teach us here in this moment?" Well, what, what about this? What, what if God's trying to teach us in our little wilderness moment to remember God's guidance that we would walk in the way the Lord has shown us? What if God is, trying to show, God is reminding us that his way is indeed better than our way? What if God is saying, hey, listen, you need to remember me. Maybe you've forgotten me. And maybe this season, this moment, these days, these weeks, maybe... God is trying to get our attention. Hey, listen, you you've forgotten about me. And because you forgot about me, I'm going to I'm going to I'm going to let you I'm going to let you have it your way. I'm going to let you suffer a little bit. I'm going to I'm going to test you. This is going to be a time of trial for you. This is going to be this this is meant to drive you to look beyond yourself. What if that this season is 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 a season to where you know, God is saying you need to you need to slow down and remember me. Remember who I am. Remember what I do for my people. Remember what my promises are. Remember all the good things that I have done for you in the past that I'm trying to do for you right now that I have in store for you in the future. What if all of those things is something that God's trying to get us to remember? So Moses is trying to get the people of Israel to remember. He was trying to get them to remember to walk to, you know, remember the Lord who has led you. Maybe we need to remember in this time of testing for us, maybe we need to remember who the Lord is. Maybe we need to remember his guidance. And, and that manifests itself in obedience. And we'll talk about that in a moment. But also, we could say, well, if this is a test, what is God up to? What is God doing? What if he's humbling us? What if we, because we've forgotten the Lord, what if we have become so self-sufficient that we have acted like practical atheists? What if we have said in our minds, yes, we believe in God, we believe in Jesus, we believe in the cross and resurrection of Christ, and yet, then yet we live in total opposition to that confession of faith? What if we say one thing with our mouths, but our lives reflect another thing, and because of that, God is humbling us? God is saying, okay, you've tried to live in your own strength long enough, and I'm showing you, you're not in control. Because by the way, I don't, if, if, if this thing has, has taught us one thing, if this quarantine, if this COVID-19 issue has taught us one thing, you and I are not in control. You do not have it all together. And you know what? That's okay. 
because you and I need to be humble enough. We need to come to a place of dependence upon the Lord where we can say, God, I don't have it all together. Um, we're looking to you. We're following you. God, we're desperate for you. That needs to be our posture. And because we've gotten so, we have our own set rhythms of life. We have our own work schedules, and we know what we're going to do Monday through Friday when we wake up and we come home. We know what time we're going to be there. We know how much money we're going to make. We know what, what kind of food we're going to put on the table. Like we, 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 we have begun to look to ourselves, and we just kind of slowly put the Lord on the back burner. What if God is saying, hey, listen, I'm, I'm going to humble you. I'm going to remind you, you need me. And God's not doing that to merely just for the fun of chastising you. God's not doing that to merely do that in, in, with some type of mean intention. God is doing that. So it would create a, dependent, a greater dependence on our part upon him. So we would say, Lord, every day of my life I need you. Every day of my life I'm so dependent. The very breath that I breathe, I'm dependent upon you. What if, God's, what if God's testing us? What if God is trying to do that? What if God is doing that here in this moment? He's humbling us so we would learn to depend upon the Lord in a greater sense. Third, if this is a test, what is God doing? Maybe God is using this time so we would check our hearts and we, we would repent. You know, Moses tells the people of Israel here, he's, he was testing you to see what was in your heart, but it wasn't for God to see. God knows everything. He already knows what's in your heart. What's in your heart? Sin unfaithfulness, uh, the tendency to, to, to wander and meander away from God. He already knows what's in your heart. Maybe this season, God is trying to slow us down so we can see what was really in there. So we can go, mm, I, need to get, I need to be reconnected. I need to slow down and be more in prayer, more in the word, be more in more conversation with other believers. Maybe I need to, I need to, to, to confess my sin and, and, and to hear the words that it is finished, you are forgiven. What if, what if that's what God is trying to do too? Introspectively trying to get us to examine ourselves so we would repent of, of our, our, this, this illusion of self-dependence. We would repent and say, God, I, just, I need to, this has shown me, I need to get reconnected with you. Well, the fourth and last thing that God might be doing in this time of testing and time of trial is this. God is showing us that regardless of what we're going, what, regardless of what's happening, that your obedience stays the same. Your life, your walk with Jesus Christ doesn't change. Some, there, there are some things that don't change. Number one, God's love for you doesn't change. The cross and resurrection that saves us and gives us, gives us new life doesn't change. Our obedience to Christ doesn't change. Moses says here that God was testing you uh, so it would reveal what's in your heart so that you would keep, so, whether, so you would come to a place where you would either, you would keep his commandments or not. In other words, that because of your faith in Christ, you live out of that faith and you walk in obedience. What if God is testing testing us to say, "Listen, I want to see how, I want to see you know how how you respond. Are you going to be obedient? You know, regardless of what circumstances we find ourselves in, this does not change. Love God with all your heart, mind, body, and strength, and love one another. Love your neighbor as yourself." Jesus said, "Those are the, the those are the two great commands." That the law hangs on those two things. You love God and love one another. I mean, and so in this time, you're saying, well, how can we live? How, how do I live as a Christian in this time? Well, we live, we live on those two commandments. I, I'm going I'm to live in such a way during quarantine. I'm going to live in such a way during this pandemic that I'm going I'm I'm to love God every day. I'm going to wake up and I'm just going to get... With, alone with him, and I'm gonna, I want to, I want to grow in my, I want, I want, I want to grow in my walk with him, and I'm gonna love other people. You know, this is a time where we do not need to be selfish. You know, people are hoarding toilet paper, they're hoarding milk, or they were at, at the first couple of weeks of this. You know, they're hoarding all of these things, and there's all the selfishness, and it's I'm out to get me and my own and for myself, and all of this stuff. You know, is that really loving our neighbor? Is that is that 
Is that really a demonstration of obedience where we're to bear with one another and we're to, we're to, be, we're to put one another before ourselves? You know, our obedience doesn't change. Moses was telling them, listen, in the 40 years in the wilderness, in this dry desert place where we've just been wandering day in and day out, your obedience shouldn't change. How you love and treat and one another and keep the peace and deal with things and suffer together and encourage one another, like all that stays the same. What if this moment in the life of the church, in the life of uh, our culture in the life of the world, the global community, what if this was a test? What if this is a test? How will you respond? God's desire is for you to respond in obedience. I'm going to keep on loving Jesus. I'm going to keep walking with him, and I'm going to keep on loving other people just like I would in any other circumstance. You see, our circumstances change, but our calling doesn't. Our obedience doesn't. Our identity in Christ doesn't. The cross and resurrection doesn't. God, God's love for us doesn't. So, so because of our faith in Him, we continue to live out our continue to live out that, that faith in obedience. Remembrance is demonstrated in obedience. If we remember the Lord, we remember His Word, we remember His love for us, then we are freed up to live out that faith in, in front of other people and towards other people. So, church. What if this is a test? What if this is a test, a, a self-examination that God is saying, I'm trying to get you to see some things, and these things are meant to be good. I'm going to humble you. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to I'm, I'm put you on your knees so you will be dependent upon me I, because I know what's best for you. I love you. I, I, I have all wisdom. I have all power. I, I, I know the way forward. I'm trying to get you to see that. And also, I'm trying to get you to walk in, in, in a greater measure of faith, living out your faith in this time. You know, the, uh, one of the, the greatest testimony is how, the, uh, is how God's people live uh, you know, out, our, out our faith in times of suffering. It's, e it's easy to say you're a Christian and to live and to give and to be sacrificial and to put other people first when, when life is easy, you know, when everything's going your way. But when, when the rubber hit meets the road and, and, and the road is bumpy, and there are potholes in the road, and there are dead ends, and there are, um, you know, and there are uh, all these issues that 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 you face along the way. That is when uh, the time to live out your faith is even more significant, and even have, has even more impact. And so, let me encourage you from Deuteronomy eight: as the people of Israel wander in the wilderness, sometimes it maybe it, it, you've had days where it feels like you, you you've been wandering. You know, just as God has provided for them, he, he, he guided them, and he, he ultimately delivered them from that wilderness. God, too, will provide for us. He has provided for us. God, will, God is guiding us right now. Uh, he does that through his word, uh, through the insights of other believers, and so we're trusting in those things. And God will deliver us from this moment, this virus, this pandemic, this issue. And, and, and God will bring about a new kind of normal. may not be the way life was before, but God will lead us through this. God will deliver us. He, he is our rescuer. And so we are looking to him. We're thankful for God's goodness. And so let me just say, I am uh, so excited to see what, how God is going to use this in your life, in my life, in the life of our church, in the life of our culture, and in the life of our country, and really just around the world, that I believe that God... Uh, maybe trying to shake some things up, uh, making, uh, bringing more awareness to his grace and his wisdom. So again, I just want to, I just want to encourage you, uh, you know, that this, that this could be a test and, and it may be for our, our humility and for our dependence, for our obedience. And ultimately it, it would produce a greater faith in us. And so, so let's, let's take that away from this. This is, a, this can be a positive thing and I'm looking forward to, to all the things that uh, that I just said, you know, it's going to be uh, it's going to be great, and I think that when we meet together again, uh, when we are able to gather together on Sunday morning, on Wednesday nights, when we're able to have barbecues and, and fellowship meals, and to celebrate just the, just living life together and celebrate God's goodness in in, in a, in a um, in, in a new kind of way, it's going to be exciting. You know, there's all kinds of opportunities for for the church to be the church, and so I just want to encourage you. Uh, you know, our obedience stays the same. And so we're walking in that way. So again, 
thank you all for tuning in. I'm I, I'm glad you guys have a hope that, that your week has been going great. I'm looking forward to Sunday morning. I'm looking forward to maybe some special announcements for May. They're waiting to hear back on, on what's going to happen with the, our, our ability to meet in, in government standards and all this kind of stuff. And so looking forward, may have some interesting and new opportunities to meet and gather on Sunday morning. Uh, we'll see. Uh, how how those things play out, but stay tuned, and we'll uh, we'll we'll look forward to to sharing that with you. Thank you, and we hope you guys have a great uh, great evening and a great rest of your week.